visiting a green roof at Cardinal Engineering in downtown Oklahoma City. And joining me is Dr. Jason Vogel to tell us about the green roof technology. Well, first, what are some of the benefits of having a green roof? So a, a green roof is essentially vegetation on the roof, mm -hmm. and it's going to provide stormwater management. It's going to lessen the amount of runoff that you have coming off the roof. In addition to that, soil and plants are great insulators, so mm -hmm. you're going to actually save energy um, within the, the structure. You're going to be cooler in the summertime and warmer in the wintertime. Now, how is a green roof constructed? How do we begin to install something like this? So mm -hmm. a green roof has several different layers mm -hmm. and what, what you're doing is you have plants on the surface and then you're going to have a planting media underneath that mm -hmm. and that planting media is comprised of soil aggregate mm -hmm. along with about 10 or 20 percent organic. So that soil, that soil or the aggregate is going to allow for the roots to mm -hmm. hold into that structure and um, continuing to grow and it also retains water that way. And here we have gravel uh, for that aggregate but I know you're experimenting with different substrates as well. Exactly, so um, expanded shale or expanded clay are common um, mm -hmm. aggregates for green roofs but um, one of the limitations of green roofs is its weight so we're looking at some lighter materials that may possibly be used for retrofits for green roofs. Excellent, well we'll look forward to seeing some of that come out in the future. So within the aggregate, what is all this housed in, the plants and the aggregate? Mm -hmm. So there's really two different types of of green roofs and it's based a lot on the thickness and the management of the green roof but an extensive green roof is generally going to be a thinner media mm -hmm. so a lot of times that will be um, comprised of trays that you just bring up onto the roof and you install onto the rooftop mm -hmm. whereas an intensive green roof many times is not in trays but is simply a, a layer of the soil media that the plants are growing on and you can put a lot of different types of plants but it requires more intensive management as well mm -hmm. um, and then underneath that you'll have an, you always need to have a barrier for roots and for water so that the roots and water don't leak into the structure underneath. Of course protect the building. How deep are the planting trays or the, the soil media? Mm -hmm. So they will vary um, depending on um, what you'd like to grow in, in it and what the, what the structure can actually handle. Mm -hmm. um, the minimum thickness is generally three to four inches, but we found in Oklahoma six or eight inches um, works much better for planting media to grow plants on the roof because the climate is so extreme on the rooftops yeah. in Oklahoma in the summertime that we need to have a little bit more uh, media underneath a there bigger for the buffer. plants to grow. Absolutely. Bet. We need that in our gardens too. Yeah. <laughs> what are some of the, I imagine there's some structural limitations, you know, because there is a weight that you're putting on this. If you wanted to retrofit a building with a green roof, what are the considerations? So you definitely need to bring in a structural engineer to do an analysis on mm -hmm. the building to make sure that it can hold the weight that you'll have in these trays because we have a two foot by four foot tray is very common. If that's eight, if that has eight inches of media when it has water on top of it and any snow load considerations, then that could weigh over 400 pounds in that two foot by four foot little wow. section. If you cover your whole roof with that during a rainstorm, that's a lot of weight. Absolutely, but we can strengthen root, uh, roofs in order to be able to hold that weight. Exactly, mm -hmm. so that's where you bring in your professional mm -hmm. engineer that can come in and do an analysis and mm -hmm. retrofit your building so that it will be able to hold that, that amount of weight. Now this roof is flat, what about slopes to roof? So in general on a green roof you want to have a slope less than 10%. You can do more than 10% but it requires a little bit different design where you're probably going to have some type of little walls or partitions that's going to hold that soil media so it doesn't slough off the roof. And we're going to be looking at a residential landscape that has some barriers such as that. That is correct. It's okay. probably a two to one slope or so mm -hmm. at, that, at that other place and they've actually just used boards every so often to hold the media in place so that it doesn't slide off and it doesn't run off from the water hitting it. Okay. Any other considerations when So the other sold? consideration, as most can imagine, this is Oklahoma gardening, so plants <laughs> and the survival of plants on the yeah. rooftop is, is a big limitation and there's, there's um, research going on here in Oklahoma right now trying to look and see what type of plants can survive in the environment of the roof in a relatively um, thin um, soil layer. So that's definitely um, some, a consideration when you're trying to install a green roof. But, um, but when you do install it, it can last twice as long as a regular green roof because that, those soil and plants are really good UV buffers and that's what breaks down your traditional right. roofs. Mm -hmm. But with, with um, the plants and the soil on top of it, that actually just makes them grow more. So that's a good thing. And with the plant side of it, you've been working with Dr. Reed Kaufman 
formerly from OU. He's now at Kent State and he's joining us today to talk about some of the plant aspects. That's correct. Well, Reed, I imagine the plant palette is somewhat limited of what can survive on an Oklahoma rooftop. Yeah, that's true, mm -hmm. obviously. Um, you know, as Dr. Vogel was talking about, a real limitation is the depth of the substrate mm -hmm. that the plants are growing in. And we're just looking at somewhere around six inches is probably the minimum, but um, mm -hmm. nationally they've been able to grow plants in lower amounts of soil. The plants that you have here uh, growing in this roof at Cardinal Engineering are actually a pretty good selection of nursery available plants in Oklahoma. Yeah, all these are very easy to find. Yeah. Um, obviously a lot of sedum. I see a couple different sedums in here. Yeah. Wonderful drought tolerant plants, so uh, I imagine they would be very successful. Mm -hmm. sedums, sedums are the traditional workhorse for green mm -hmm. roofs throughout uh, North America and Europe. We are seeing a little limitation in them mm -hmm. as we go down into the, you know, our, the warmer climates of, the, yeah. of North America. So Oklahoma, we're testing to see which ones are doing well. Okay. Uh, they have uh, either the, the Mexican sedum here or, or, or an Angelina. One of the plants that's another succulent plant that works really well is the uh, ice plant down here, the yeah. Dallas Permacupera. And it adds a really nice color to the planting as well. Yeah, it does. So, really it does. Nice. And it seems to go through a couple of blooming cycles. You'll see it mm -hmm. in the fall, it may die back a little in the summer, mm -hmm. but then it'll actually come back um, in the spring as well. Yes, so. absolutely. Um, the grasses, tell me about these. So I really love the texture of a grass in a garden, but a lot of them are deep rooted, so I'm sure they don't work. Yeah. The Mexican feather grass, so. Yeah, Mexican feather grass is really popular now in, in a lot of regular gardens, on-grade gardens, and we're seeing it uh, doing pretty well in the Cardinal Engineering roof. Um, and another grass that's an, another native grass to Oklahoma is uh, uh, Blue Grandma, which okay. does really well, seems to be doing really well in these shallow soils. Mm -hmm. So they're great because um, they're resilient in case um, something happens with watering or we don't get the storms we need. Right. I imagine a lot of the plant material you're focusing on perennials. You want kind of a all, all year cover. Yes, mm -hmm. that's, yeah, um, yes, perennials mostly. Uh, mm -hmm. There are some annuals that can be seeded into roofs that mm -hmm. will, will add color in times that you wouldn't you know, normally see them. Yeah. Obviously short lived, but um, mostly perennial herbs and grasses. And occasionally there are shrubs or woody plants, like, like this one behind us, but woody plants that are used in deeper soils. Right, we but, want to keep those out of our shallow right. eight inch pots. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, in this example, we have a pretty limited plant palette um, with the sedums and the grass. We have our uh, black-eyed Susans, but there's a nice diversity of forms, and I'm sure that also relates to um, the insects and other things that might come in to yeah, the garden. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, this is a really good uh, selection uh, by the designers of this garden. You know, you broad, broadly form in your, your um, little your black eyed Susans against the nice texture of the grasses. Mm -hmm. uh, this will last throughout the seasons, but it does provide ecological benefits. Not only is it aesthetic, um, but it actually provides really important pollinator opportunities. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, those pollinators migrate through the urban environment. We need to keep them alive to, so our crops can be reproduced and stuff like that. So um, it's, it's an important component to a lot of roofs uh, is a biodiversity initiative. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the areas that you really focus on, on this idea yeah. of uh, living architecture. Right. Tell us just quickly a little bit of that. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people think, why would you put roof, you know, plants on a rooftop? Isn't mm -hmm. that kind of, we can grow them on the ground? Well, not in the urban environment. Right. And our cities have become kind of ecological liabilities, and with billions of people now living in the city, mm -hmm. we need to have ecological services as a part of our architecture. Mm -hmm. uh, the 21st century will be about not just the green roofs, but green roofs and green walls and the way in which an architectural structure creates ecological services and benefits for the citizens. And that'll help, uh, like Jason said, contribute to managing water, but also air quality mm -hmm. and uh, buffering temperatures. There's a lot that can be done. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Now, of course, I'm sure a lot of our viewers are wondering how much this costs. What's yeah. the average cost, maybe per foot, square foot, for a green roof? They, they've, they vary based on the amount of depth of material mm -hmm. you're going to put into it and whether they're going to be irrigated. The, uh, the average cost now can be below $10 per square foot when going in. Um, they can range up to $30 or more per square foot depending on what it is that you put into them. Mm -hmm. It seems like a lot uh, when you're talking about um, 
adding a garden to the top of your building. Mm -hmm. But one of the things you're doing is you're protecting that membrane, as Dr. Vogel was talking about. You protect the waterproofing membrane. Mm -hmm. So the cost of the, the roof is offset by the duration of that membrane. It's extended at least twice and sometimes three times its life mm -hmm. by putting a, a, a roof garden on top of it. So this can last about how many years? Yeah, these, these normal roofs will last uh, 15, 20 years, maybe 25 out of a good one. Um, we've seen, in Oklahoma, seen roofs that will last over 40 years in our severe um, um, climate, which we'll, we'll, we'll see in our, our residential roof. Uh, so we have a, a, a precedent here that says it will this be cost-benefit to, mm -hmm. to put these on a roof. They're seeing uh, roofs uh, in Europe that are over 60 years. Uh, without Wonderful. replacing their waterproofing membrane. And when we look at costs, we also want to think about energy savings inside the home. So right. That would add to it. Absolutely. What about, uh, one last thing, the maintenance. What do we need to consider to maintain a green roof? Well, well, maintenance, you know, it is a garden. Yeah. I mean, so mm -hmm. it's not a whole lot different than garden maintenance. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to, you know, that's one of the things you'll have to think about when placing it on your structure. How can you get to it? Uh, if you're going to want to climb up the ladder, is it safe to get onto the structure that you're on? Um, they'll maintain a roof like this largely because it's an aesthetic oriented roof, just like you would a, a highly maintained garden. Mm -hmm. Weeding it regularly. Weeding it regularly, making Fairly. sure you're getting rid of the, the, um, the elms and, and other mm -hmm. woody species that come into your roof. Um, the, uh, the other side of it is some roofs will not be aesthetic but be designed simply for ecological purposes. Mm -hmm. It may require um, just annual removal of like debris uh, that's um, dried out so you can make sure you don't have a fire hazard. Okay. And that's, that's some of the international building codes that are associated with this. Well, excellent. I think this is a really beautiful application. Um, so many opportunities and I'm glad that there's some research taking place here in Oklahoma. Absolutely. Thank you very much. You're welcome. We've looked at a green roof in a commercial setting, but now we're going to transition to the home setting. And joining me is Don Hummer. Can you tell us a bit about the history of the house and the green roof here? Yes, the house was built in the early 50s. It was designed by an architect named Robert L. Bird from California, and he designed the house for Kenneth and Winnie Mae Rogers. Okay. And Winnie Mae was the daughter of F.C. Hall who was a prominent early Oklahoma oil man mm -hmm. and financed a lot of Wiley Post airplane flights. Okay. In fact, he financed the airplane that Wiley Post flew around the world in the early 30s. Mm -hmm. And they named this airplane the Winnie Mae after F.C. Hall's daughter. Excellent. So Winnie Mae actually is the person and her husband that built this house in the 50s. Mm -hmm. And the architect, uh, Mr. Bird, called it on the plans an Irish farmhouse. Okay. And so we think that the, the design of the sod roof part was more cosmetic than it was really functional. Mm -hmm. But it kind of tied in the Oklahoma sod houses Absolutely. with the Irish sod houses. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it turned out to be a very functional roof after all because it is cooler in the place in the summertime. I have no air conditioning in this part of the house mm -hmm. and it will stay about 10 degrees cooler inside consistently in the summertime. Now when this was originally put in, um, the trees were young and it had more of that traditional I'm sure that's right. prairie type style. I'm sure that's right. Um, but what a great solution to find a really mm -hmm. shade tolerant yet durable plant with the monkey grass. Yes, mm -hmm. it requires very little maintenance. Mm -hmm. We water it occasionally with a sprinkler system and we I don't mow it. Mm -hmm. I just <laughs> let it stay natural year round. What a wonderful little piece of history that you get to be a part of. Well, thank you. Yes, uh, we enjoy it very much. Thank you.